Seaside Cycling Road, a road that can be found on Route 110 in the third generation of Pokemon games. It's this light blue structure we can see going across the route. This is also where you can try out the Cycling Road Challenge, a small mini game where you have to go through the cycling road as fast as you can and with the least amount of collisions possible. There is, however, a small inconsistency when it comes to the results you get in the challenge. But before we talk about that, let's go over the basics first. When the player arrives in Moville, they can get a bike from the shop owner Rydal, located northeast of the city. In Gen 3, there are two bikes you can choose from, the Acro Bike and the Mac Bike. The Acro Bike allows the player to perform tricks by doing specific inputs with the D-pad and B-button. The Mach bike, on the other hand, is the more traditional option that is purely geared towards speed. And when I say speed, I mean top speed. That bike can go really fast in comparison to other Pokemon games, making it difficult to use without bonking into something. It's also worth noting that it takes a couple frames for this bike to reach its maximum speed. In this video, we will be focusing on the Mach bike, and I will explain why in a bit. Upon acquiring their brand new bike, the player can now ride on the cycling road, and defeat some trainers along the way. If the player chose the Mac bike and entered the cycling road from Moville's side, the game would initiate the challenge and the bike team song would start playing. After completing the challenge, an NPC will judge the player's performance based on how fast they went and how many collisions they had. It will then be possible to check what personal best the player has by talking to the sign next to the judge. On the other hand, if the player tries to do the challenge with an acro bike, the bike team's song will not play and the judge will not say anything after reaching the end. But if you try talking to him, he will explain that using an acro bike does not qualify for rating, because they are easy to turn. Now that we know how to get to the cycling road and how to start the challenge, let's check what the best route is. The layout of the cycling road is fairly simple, so figuring that out is not too complicated. It all comes down to how many steps you take in total during the challenge. You can turn anywhere here for instance and the outcome would be the same. Ultimately, it takes 128 steps to beat the challenge. Or, if you do it like Tula Assisted Speedrunner Plush did here, then it's 130 steps. But because of how the Mach bike accelerates faster by going forward instead of turning, the total amount of frames spent in the challenge is exactly the same for both of them. At the start of the video, however, I talked about an inconsistency with the times you get at the end of the challenge. When searching for information about this, the popular belief seems to be that 9.15 is the fastest time possible. But you will often find confused people who are unable to get this exact time despite doing the challenge optimally. Some people even claim to have achieved faster times than 9.15. In this video, my goal will be to shed some light on this mystery. First, we will look at how the challenge works internally. Upon turning the game on, it will start incrementing a value in memory on every frame. Then, when entering the cycling road, on the last frame the route 110 sign is shown on screen, the game will copy the value of that frame counter somewhere else in memory to indicate on which frame the challenge started, as well as switch a flag dedicated to the challenge from 0 to 1. During the challenge, if the player ever bonks into something, the game will also keep track of that. Finally, when arriving at the end, on the frame just before the judge starts talking to you, the game will calculate the final time to display. It will start by subtracting the current value of the frame counter with the one it saved at the start of the challenge. In this case we get 549. This value essentially corresponds to the amount of frames it took the player to complete the challenge. With that 549 value, the game will be able to calculate both the seconds and milliseconds parts of the final time. For seconds, the game will divide 549 by 60. And because 549 is stored as an integer, there won't be a decimal point in the result. Then, it will simply add a dot. As for milliseconds, the game will do a modulo 60 operation on 549. A modulo operation is like a division, but the result will instead be the rest of the division. It then multiplies that by 100, and finally divides it by 60. Thanks to these operations, I created a table to see which times are achievable. As you can see, 915 falls exactly here. Anything lower than that is therefore impossible to get. Which means these times you're seeing on screen right now, sorry to say, but it never happened. So now we know a little bit more about the mechanics and possible times of the challenge. But why are we sometimes slower than 915? I will get to that now. When analyzing a run frame by frame with tools made for tool-assisted speedrunners, such as Studio, 
I noticed that runs getting a 916 had a frame of lag, represented here in red, while 915s had none. Lag frames are a normal thing, and usually happen during loading screens. However, they can also happen outside loading screens. If you remember the table I showed earlier, being a single frame slower than 915 will get you a 916, which corresponds to the single lag frame phenomenon we just observed. And that means people getting a 918 were getting two lag frames. To help me better visualize when they happen in the future, I added a small lag frame counter here at the top. So now the new question is why do lag frames sometimes happen and sometimes not? To figure that out, I made a Lua script that would do the challenge a bunch of times for me. For each attempt, it would have an incrementing delay in frames in an effort to produce different results. I figured having more data like this would hopefully point me in the right direction. Thanks to all the data I got, it was pretty clear to me that the lag was happening after a set amount of steps. Inside the game's code, there is this function which groups all events related to taking steps in the game. For instance, if your Pokémon is poisoned, this function will take care of making your Pokémon take damage every 4 steps. Fun fact by the way, did you know that if your Pokémon is poisoned, it will not take any damage inside the secret base? Personally, I had no idea, but I just love these obscure mechanics, man. Ok, back to the step counter events. From here, I disabled each event one by one to see if lag frames were still happening during the challenge or not. And I have found not just one, but two culprits. The first one is the friendship step counter function. Friendship in Pokemon games is a value that every Pokemon has which can go from 0 to 255. Some mechanics such as evolutions and the power of certain moves can be affected by friendship. The catch is that friendship is completely hidden to the player, and the only way to gauge how high friendship is, is by talking to a friendship raider. Now, the way the function works is as follows. Every 128 steps, the game will cycle through every Pokémon in your party, and for each of them, they have a 50% chance of earning one additional friendship point. And the big catch here is that lag will happen based on how many Pokémon you have with you. Because the more Pokémon you have, that means more brain power required by the game to do the checks, and potentially lagging behind. It's also worth noting that whether a Pokémon is awarded a friendship point or not, or if the Pokémon already has maximum friendship, there will still be potential candidates for creating lag if the party is big enough. From there, I decided to run the challenge with just the friendship function enabled. I did so a thousand times, with a team of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 Pokémon for a total of 6000 runs. From the stats I got, the game can either lag for 1 frame or even 2 frames at once, but that's incredibly rare, and only happens with a party of 6. For the record, you will see the columns labeled Bonked and Pokenav in these tables. That's because during the challenge, there is this NPC who sometimes gets in the way, as well as Pokenav calls that can sometimes happen. To add insult to injury, if you remember at the start of the video, I mentioned that you had to take at least 128 steps to beat the challenge optimally. That means you simply cannot avoid these lag frames, because you will always fall in the friendship step counter cycle when doing the challenge. The next one is the egg step counter function. It will simply check if an egg should hatch or not. Pokemon eggs all have a set amount of egg cycles that the player needs to work for it to hatch. One egg cycle is 255 steps. First. The function will go through the player's party to see if there are any eggs. If so, the game will process their egg cycles. However, if there aren't any eggs, well, it won't do anything. But similar to the friendship function, because the game made the effort of checking the party for any eggs in the first place, that's already enough to potentially generate some lag if the party is big enough. Unlike the friendship function though, this one can be avoided during the challenge because the function is called every 255 steps. I also did 6000 runs with just the egg function enabled, and it seems to only generate one lag frame with a party of at least 4 Pokémon. Therefore, we can conclude that runs getting 915s had small enough parties where the friendship and egg checks didn't generate any lag. 916s likely had lag generated only by the friendship check and the 918s had either one lag frame from both the friendship and the egg checks, or two lag frames only from the friendship check. So that's really all there is to it. I'm hoping you can boot up the game right now, have a single Pokémon in your party, and get a 915 each time you do the challenge optimally. 
It's also worth noting that most of my testing was done on Emerald. But everything I explained also applies to Ruby and Sapphire. Now if you paid attention earlier, I said that the friendship function can very rarely generate two lag frames at once. If we also add the egg function's lag frame on top of it, this would give us a three lag frame run, which is insanely rare. In my opinion, getting such a run sounds a lot cooler than just getting a 915. I wasn't able to get it myself, but my Lua script did. So, allow me to introduce you, the worst of the best, the very first recorded 920 in the Seaside Cycling Road Challenge. Thanks for watching.